Schaefer at Ivy Tech. I'd like to start today's President's Update with a thank you for the work on a project we discussed on the President's Update last fall. The payroll lag project planned some, for some time and our human resources and payroll teams have worked tirelessly to make this happen. This team of dedicated individuals used hard work and thoughtful consideration to put the plan into action. Thank you for your deep dedication to our faculty and staff while ensuring legal compliance, financial soundness, accuracy, and equity. We still have one last major milestone, the faculty change to the bi-weekly pay frequency in August. But I hope you'll join me in acknowledging the outstanding work from our payroll and HR teams to make this transition a success and to move Ivy Tech in its path toward a more efficient and effective payroll future. Closely related to payroll is pay. You should have received an email from me earlier today about the college's salary approach for this year. There is considerable uncertainty about the new state budget and the college is just beginning to really pull up our nose on enrollments. Yes, summer enrollments are up by almost 2%. Thank you very much. These enrollments fund the other 50% of our budgets. As a result, we are making our investments in the most sustainable and impactful way. First, it was my top priority to increase the minimum salaries for our full-time employees to $30,000. This continues our efforts of the last two years to ensure all full-time employees are making a minimum of $30,000 a livable wage. The second group is providing a base pay increase of up to 2% for our adjunct faculty and our part-time employees. Campuses and systems office will receive a 2% pool for a one-time pay for the full-time faculty and staff with a few exceptions. Most notably, chancellors will receive up to 1% one-time pay and the senior level systems office administrators will not receive an increase or one-time pay. Though I would have liked to have authorized base salary increases for all employees, it just wouldn't be prudent. As we continue our focused progress in the strategic plan, I am confident we will have the persistence, enrollment, and completions providing our students and graduates with high wage, high demand careers. And this will also provide the strong revenues to allow us to increase salaries in the future. Another area in which I know you're interested is in progress with the hubs. 17 hub analysis projects are currently underway and are in various stages of completion. Each of our hub analysis projects includes a team of campus staff, campus leadership, and systems office representation. You can find details on the status of each analysis project on My Ivy. Additionally, we have formally kicked off four hub implementation projects. You'll recall from previous conversations that once a hub analysis is complete, the recommendations are presented to Executive Council for approval, and then the approved recommendations move into implementation. The four areas that have moved into implementation are public safety and security, ICAP, which is our online dual credit through the Indiana Department of Education, finance, and grants. As we have with public safety and security, we will share implementation details throughout the implementation of each project. I'd now like to share with you some details of the upcoming change to the state's performance funding model. The Indiana Commission on Higher Education will be adjusting awards for stackable credentials. We've been talking about this as the change in SIP codes, but that doesn't really paint the full picture. I've asked Mary Jane Michalak, our Vice President of Government Relations, to join me today and explain more. Welcome, Mary Jane. Thank you, Sue. As you may know, the state of Indiana provides operating support for the state public institutions in the biennial budget. Funding is provided through two main categories, base funding and performance funding. Base funding reflects historical changes in student enrollment, I apologize, and adjusted for inflation accounts for the predominant portion of all funding provided to each college. 
A small portion of base funding is reallocated through a performance funding formula that rewards outcome measures like degree production and on-time completion instead of funding traditional input measures like student enrollment. Historically, the Commission for Higher Education has funded Ivy Tech for five areas. Overall student degree completion, at-risk student degree completion, student persistence, on-time graduation, and remediation. The Commission was required by statute to review the performance funding formula metrics over the past 18 months and make recommendations for changes. One of those changes will affect Ivy Tech because we have built stackable credentials into many of our programs. In the past, every credential awarded to a student has provided funding from the state, even when multiple credentials were earned by a student in the same year. However, the highest credential is the only credential that counts towards the state educational attainment rate. And during the performance funding review, the commission determined that they wanted to fund the highest credential awarded to a student in each year. So how does this relate to zip codes? We use zip codes for reporting to the commission for performance funding purposes. As some of you know, zip codes are the classification of instructional program codes that support the accurate tracking and reporting of fields of study and program completions activities. Zip codes are divided into three level hierarchy. As you'll see in this example, the highest level is a two digit series, which is composed of 47 categories. This is followed by a four-digit series, which is composed of 421 categories. And finally, the level six, the level six-digit series, which is composed of 1,847 categories. For the next state budget cycle, so beginning in the 2019-2020 fiscal year, the state's performance funding formula will only pay for the highest credential awarded in each fiscal year according to each six digit SIP code. The state will continue to pay for stackable credentials earned in different fiscal years. So let's take a look at some examples. In this example, in fiscal year one, the student earns a certificate in bookkeeping. In fiscal year two, the student earns a cert technical certificate in accounting and in fiscal year three, the student earns an associate degree in accounting. Though they all have the same six digit SIP code, because the instructional program, these three credentials would count in the performance funding formula in each of the fiscal years. However, in example two, if the technical certificate in accounting and the associate degree in accounting are both earned in the same fiscal year, and they both have the same six digit SIP code, only the associate degree in accounting would be calculated in the performance funding formula. This will impact our performance funding outputs in three categories. Overall student degree completion, at risk student degree completion, and a new metric called the STEM metric, which is intended to recognize each institution's individual contribution to workforce alignment for high demand, high wage certificates and associate degrees in STEM fields. Ivy Tech has benefited in recent years from being able to count all credentials awarded, even when the student received the award in the same fiscal year. This meant that we were able to count two or even three credentials in a single year for a single student. This change in the performance funding formula will place an increasing importance on Ivy Tech to award credentials when the student earns them rather than calculating and awarding the credentials at the end of the time the student graduates. Most importantly, this change is good for students. They will be awarded credentials as they earn them. Thank you, Mary Jane. That's so correct. These milestone credentials will provide our students with improved career options along the way as we stack those credentials appropriately. Thank you. 
Well, this was your first President's Update Report. Mary Jane, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your leadership in working with our partners at CHE and ensuring our team at Ivy Tech understands the impact of these changes. Thank you. As we complete the first six months of our strategic plan, we continue to look for ways to engage staff and faculty across the college and to provide opportunities to participate in fulfilling the objectives of our strategic plan. As such, I am excited to share that our strategic leadership rotation positions are open. These positions are short-term, six-month opportunities designed to increase Ivy Tech's leadership capacity while providing a meaningful development opportunity for those selected to participate. I see high levels of talent and commitment to the college on a daily basis as I visit campuses and meet with faculty and staff. Allowing talent and energy to contribute to the college's strategic vision is both an exciting and a necessary endeavor. Moreover, one of our goals within the strategic plan is to develop and retain high quality talent. And given the tremendous amount of high quality talent throughout our 19 campus system and systems office, we are pleased to provide such an opportunity to help develop the future leaders of the college. Strategic rotational leads will effectively be managing the efforts of our respective goal teams while supporting the needs through problem solving and collaboration across campuses and systems office teams. Strategic rotational leads guide the monthly large team meetings and participate as needed and appropriate on the smaller strategy teams within each goal. The ideal lead embodies the spirit and mission of the college on a daily basis and consistently demonstrates a willingness to take on increased responsibility to positively affect the outcomes of all of our efforts. If having a direct effect on the college's strategic plan sounds attractive to you and you are willing to take on the responsibility of guiding one of our goal teams, I encourage you very much to apply. To do so, you will need to complete the application and submit it by June 15, 2018 at the link shown on the screen. Next. I would like to take the opportunity to thank all of you for your continued support to the rollout of 40X statewide. At our next President's Update, we will be sharing how our four pilot campuses have engaged in 40X across their campuses. As you will see, one of our pilot campuses, Lawrenceburg, had their kickoff just this past week. We look forward to hearing more about that in July. In addition to the four pilots, teams across the state have been focusing on rolling out 4DX across the advising function. There are many different approaches to the WIGs and leading indicators across campuses, and this is encouraged as 4DX is best when the teams who are engaging in the work develop the WIGs and their leading indicators. Bloomington, for example, chose to focus on academic completion plans. Their advising wig is to increase academic completion plans for enrolled students in UDirect from 20% to 90% by fall of 2018. This wig will help them to move the needle on their lagging indicator of the total percent of students with an academic completion plan, which will impact persistence and completion on their campus. They have chosen two leading indicators to help them get there. We look forward to checking in with Bloomington and all of our other campuses on their progress. Our next guest is here to share an update on our priorities in the area of diversity, inclusion, and equity. Doran Moreland, the college's executive director, director of statewide diversity and community engagement, is here to join with us. Welcome, Doran. Thank you, Sue. I'm always impressed by the efforts underway on each of our campuses, and I'm excited to build upon our best ideas to broaden impacts across Indiana. The first effort aligns with goal five of our strategic plan, focus on enrollment, goal, and, and goal one, focus on student success, a project seeking to improve diversity in our faculty. We are constantly adapting as we work to meet the needs of our changing communities. To this end, we are designing a fellowship to attract faculty from diverse backgrounds. In the preliminary concept, individuals from minority backgrounds who are in the process of earning a doctoral degree can have their tuition covered by committing three years of classroom instruction to any Ivy Tech campus. Ivy Tech will facilitate connections between faculty fellows and local employers upon completion of the fellowship. Human Resources, Vice Chancellors of Academic Affairs, the Statewide Diversity Committee, and our Latino Affairs Consultant will be involved in the structuring of the fellowship. 
we will seek partnership with the Indiana Commission on Higher Education and High Demand Employers to make the fellowship an attractive, high-quality experience for talent nationwide. Other related efforts currently underway are creation of mentoring, uh, mentoring programs for at-risk populations, annual symposia with nationally known thought leaders in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion, a wider reach of diversity, equity, and inclusion responsibilities throughout the college through the hub process. I'm really excited about diversity being included in the hub process because it cements Ivy Tech's commitment to diversity. As Indiana, as Indiana's community college system, we're spreading the word that we are a great place to work, grow academically, and build a career. This includes working to attract faculty who share the backgrounds of the students we serve, which is very important. Through constant improvement, we're making Indiana stronger together. Thank you again for the opportunity to share these, this with you. Thank you, Dorn. I commend you on this very important work and look forward to these efforts helping us attract and grow talented, diverse faculty, supporting our communities with mentoring, and bringing thought leaders to Ivy Tech. We look forward to hearing how those efforts are working. Over the past year, as we have moved through implementing the recommendations of our organizational restructure project, we have a number of campus chancellor positions that needed to be filled. So far this year, we've met the three new chancellors to Ivy Tech, but we also have uh, a chancellor who's taken on a new role, Jeff Scott, the chancellor of our Muncie campus, who's going to join us today to tell us more about his community and his campus. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Sue. Sue, what an exciting time to be in Muncie and Henry County. There is an energy and a vibrancy that is contagious. I am honored and humbled to be able to be the chancellor in just one small aspect of a tremendous team and community. Our biggest strength at the Muncie Henry County campus is our faculty and staff. I am so proud to work with these talented individuals every day. We have award-winning faculty and one of the strongest ASAP programs in the state. We are a C2 campus with approximately 400 employees and 5,200 students. We have a theme at our campus that we're all in this together. This overarching theme is beginning to become embedded in our attitudes to each other as colleagues, our educational partners, our community partners, as well as our city and industry leaders. Our team's core strengths are our relationships with our educational, community, and workforce partners. We work well with our local early education providers. Many of our students receive practicum experience in our preschools. In Henry County, one of our Ivy Tech graduates owns Kidding Around Daycare and is one of the only level four daycare providers in the area. In 2016-17, 1,500 high school students were enrolled in dual credit courses. 11,500 college credits were awarded saving Delaware County families more than one and a half million dollars. Just last week, our K through 12 director attended Delta High School's Senior Awards Night and handed out 38 degrees and certificates. Muncie Central has also embraced early college as they just received their cell endorsement last week. During the graduation ceremony, our vice chancellor, Dr. Mia Johnson, was invited to recognize 76 students who received their associate's degree, STGEC, certificate or technical certificate. In Henry County, we were recently invited to the Newcastle Career Center for a signing day. A student was so proud to be signing his application to come to Ivy Tech, and we were there to cheer him on. Our relationship with Ball State is as strong as it's ever been. At a recent Ball State Board of Trustees meeting, Ball State President Mearns talked about pathways for students from cradle to career. Ivy Tech is part of Ball State's vision as they begin a new partnership with Muncie Schools. We are also enhancing our Associate to MBA program with Indiana Wesleyan University. Our second cohort begins August 24th. We look at all of our educational partners, not as competition, but as a part of a collaborating collective to make our communities stronger. As we look to execute strategy, strategic plan goal seven, our community involvement is becoming more noticeable. Our faculty and staff have participated in United Way book drives, second helping food drives, Habitat for Humanity, 
Youth Opportunity Center programming, and other community events. Our diversity coordinator, Renee Wagner, hosted a male a youth conference where young men learned about topics such as how to be a man. It's not what you earn, it's what you keep. And it's not where you begin, it's where you end. We had more than 75 young men come from the area. June 19th through the 22nd, we will be having a STEM camp for middle and high school girls, which, Sue, I'm so glad you'll be there one day talking to the girls. It means so much to us. These community outreach efforts have not got unnoticed. Ken Hudson, executive director from the Whiteley Community neighborhood, said that he sees Ivy Tech as the IV for our community. On a side note, Whiteley just won the Neighborhood of the Year at the Neighborhoods USA Conference in Birmingham, Birmingham Alabama, their second straight um, award. Muncie in general has been hit hard, like most towns in the Midwest. When manufacturing left town, they left behind a big void. Ivy Tech, Muncie, and Henry County has become an anchor in the community, and our communities are realizing it. In a meeting with Jay Julian, Muncie Chamber President, he said he sees Ivy Tech as an immediate solution to fill local workforce demands. And that's exactly the message we want to convey as we align our program offerings in the right quadrants for available jobs within Muncie Henry County area. Our conversations with our workforce leaders have been intentional. Just last week, a few of us toured Progress Rail. I don't know if everyone realizes it, but Muncie is home to one of the world's largest locomotive factories. That facility is simply amazing. We plan to collaborate with them. We want our students to become future employees who are ready to begin working in their facility on day one. Our IU Health Ball Memorial Partnership is providing opportunities for our nursing program to grow 15%, which will allow us to help address the nursing shortage in our communities. We just visited Ball State or Ball Memorial Sim Lab, and we are taking some of what we saw and what we learned and plan to incorporate it into our new nursing sim labs. Henry County Health is also providing many of our nursing graduates with jobs and opportunities to further their education. By working together, education, community, and workforce, we can find and take action on research proven strategies that promote successful outcomes for all students. Jeff, that's all great information, but I know we all want to know a little bit of an update on your new Muncie project, the building project, I think $43 million building project you have starting. Oh, yes. $43 million. It's It's very exciting time. From a funding perspective, we are so very fortunate to be located in such a generous and supportive community. We have had strong foundation support from the George and Francis Ball Foundation, and they gifted us a $2 million gift. Additionally, we will be announcing a couple of other large gifts from our community that highlights the excitement and collaborative spirit that is permeating in Muncie right now, so stay tuned. Muncie has been waiting long enough, and finally we are getting that campus that our community deserves. Our focus is not only on new physical space, but also that of a new environment of emergent behaviors. We recognize that our positive growth and adaptation begins upon the relationship within a community. As we lay the foundation for our new buildings, we are also clearing the space to build department dynamics, purposeful community interactions, and intentional couplings uh, of services that are playing to our faculty and staff strengths and our stakeholder interest. Our capital campaign will raise funds to create the facilities that support best practices, innovation, and perpetuate exceptionalism. For example, we've decided that every program offered at the Muncie campus will be utilizing a structured schedule. I feel this holistic approach to student success will guide us to be good stewards of our financial resources, create a more active role for faculty and staff and student engagement, and provide more opportunities for students to progress through to completion. Jeff, has your campus also implemented 4DX? Yes, uh, we've been very excited about the implementation of 4DX. Our campus has embraced the 4DX model. Our campus WIG is in to increase unduplicated revenue generating headcount from zero to 3,661 by the end of spring 2019. 
Our student success team has been executing their team wigs, having their wig meetings, and are seeing some results. Other areas are embracing it and incorporating the use of this strategy. Some of their ideas have helped students that are being dropped from classes. Before being uh, drop paperwork filed, advisors meet with the students to hear why they are dropping and to propose other options and alternatives. Some other lead measures are to conduct up to six meaningful contacts with first semester students, making sure that our advisors understand what that meaningful contact entails. We have been providing one-on-one -on -one interventions with students identified as at risk through our advising surveys. Overall, we are striving to incorporate a culture of yes, a culture of innovation, creativity, and collaboration. We are trying to eliminate no and we can't and focusing on doing the right thing for the right reasons. In the words of Elisa Wells and Renee Wagoner, after all, community is our middle name. Sue, I could go on and on about how awesome the Muncie Henry County team is, but I know our time is about up. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a Disney fanatic. I've been there 30 plus times, so I just want to wrap something up with Walt said. You can design and create and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it takes people to make the dream a reality. Jeff, thank you. And I love Walt Disney's quote. It really does speak to the work we do on each of our campuses. Great to get to know you today and happy to have you in this new role with Ivy Tech. We're looking forward to seeing the changes coming to our Muncie campus. Thank you so much, Sue. You're welcome. Well, typically we have ended our president's update with meeting our new chancellor, but I wanted to take a few minutes today to close with honoring someone who is so special to our Ivy Tech community, our retiring provost. As you know, Dr. Steve Tincher announced his retirement earlier this year and concludes his time at Ivy Tech at the end of this month. I asked him to share some reflections on his time at Ivy Tech, but before I allow him to do that, I want to make sure you really know the full extent of his service to our college. He has served here since 1981, beginning as an adjunct faculty in accounting in the Richmond region. Now, I know that's a common starting point for many people at Ivy Tech. Three years later, Steve answered the call to move into a full-time faculty position with the college to begin serving Ivy Tech Richmond as the Director of Regional Business Affairs and Employee Relations, a role he served in for more than a decade. Prior to joining Ivy Tech, he worked for Cooper Industries in Belden Richmond Division Office in several accounting planning operation positions. Prior to that, he worked in other local accounting positions. Steve was promoted to Dean of Instruction in October of 1996 and served in that role until he was selected as the Chancellor of the Richmond campus in 2012. Dr. Tincher's responsibilities while serving as Dean of Instruction and then Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs in the region included academic program planning, regional transfer promotion, local academic partnerships with secondary schools, academic op operations and budgets, and regional administrative information instructional technology services. He has been involved with a number of committees and initiatives regionally and across the college, including the Regional Achieving the Dream Committee, Human Resource Council, Faculty Task Force, Curriculum Committees for Business Administration, Accounting, Computer Information Systems, Computer Information Technology, and a Committee for Deans of the School of Business. Dr. Tincher has also been an active participant in a number of partnership initiatives that enable Ivy Tech to serve college students and regional high school students, including a program partnership with Reed Hospital, student transfer partnerships with IU East, and Purdue School of Technology Richmond partnerships with area high schools for high school-based dual credit opportunities and early college initiatives. He has been an adjunct faculty member at a number of universities besides Ivy Tech. He teaches in the Franklin University MBA and DBA programs and has instructed various courses in the Masters of Arts and Management program at Antioch University from 93 to 2011. Leadership courses at Purdue University School of Technology, Richmond, and business courses at IU East in Indiana Wesleyan University. He earned a PhD from Regent University 
Here's his dissertation title, A Relationship Study of Self-Reported Work as Vocation and Work Attributes, and a MA and BS from Ball State. He served on several community boards and committees in the Richmond-Wayne County area, including the Wayne County Area Cherry Chamber of Commerce, Board of Directors, and Business Education Committees, IU East School of Humanities Advisory Committee, and Richmond Area Career Center Advisory Committee. He and his wife, Susan, live in Richmond. They are parents to son, Ben, who lives in Columbus with his wife, Tam. Steve. I appreciate your forgiveness in letting me share all of that information about you. I wanted our staff and faculty to understand the scope of your service to Ivy Tech and the Richmond community. Now, we'd love to hear some of your memories from your time at Ivy Tech. Thank you, thank you, Sue. My career at Ivy Tech has given purpose and meaning for my work across the years. The mission is heartfelt by faculty and staff and has been a constant throughout the years. While I have not done spectacular things, I've had the opportunity to be a, a member of teams and, and other groups that have. Following are some examples, and again, these are team projects that I had the opportunity to participate with and or be associated with. The first team I want to acknowledge is the Ivy Tech Richmond team. Sabrina, Peg, Jill, Kim, Melissa, Lindy, Valerie, to all of the Richmond team, it was an indeed a privilege for me to serve the students and the community with you. And Chad and Stacy, thank you for investing your leadership with the Ivy Tech Richmond team. The Statewide Transfer and Articulation Committee, sometimes known as STAC, this committee developed the core transfer um, library courses, and the Ivy Tech faculty earned their seat at the table of higher education with Indiana public universities. From the core transfer library to the 30 general education transfer core to the single articulation pathway programs, Ivy Tech faculty have significantly advanced a transfer as a component of Ivy Tech's comprehensive community college mission. The program proposal for the agriculture program at Ivy Tech Richmond, another opportunity I had to participate in that initiative. I want to recognize Dr. Mary Ostry, Mary was the former provost for Ivy Tech, for her leadership in the development of the new AS in agriculture in complete collaboration with Purdue University, and she did that when she was the academic officer at Ivy Tech Lafayette. Richmond was one of the initial sites to come on with that new proposal to the CHE, and it certainly has added value to the community. The development of the paramedic science program at Richmond. This complex program directly responded to a local community need that was expressed, and I want to acknowledge Jill Anderson and Kim Thurlow for their significant leadership on this project. It was a privilege to be part of that team development of the Respiratory Care Consortium Program. Based on workforce demand and needs in East Central and Richmond, this program was developed as a consortium program between the two regions and so approved by CHE. Jill Anderson and Kathy Woodward were the lead faculty on this, on this very innovative project and again, it was a pleasure to be part of that initiative. One of my first assignments in the Systems Business Division was to recruit business leaders for a statewide council of business leaders to advise the new developed and formed division. The first person I recruited was a speaker at the H. Kent Welton CHE conference, and he relayed a significant business insight as well as sincere appreciation for the work of Ivy Tech. So I talked to him after the presentation and he agreed to come on board. It was the first recruit for that council. However, soon after it was announced that the person I recruited was appointed a regional Ivy Tech chancellor. So while the first member of the council was now an integral and internal part of the college, I do want to note that I did identify the best in the business in workforce alignment for that position. Chris Lowry is now Senior Vice President for Workforce Alignment and a respected colleague. The CHE report on strengthening Indiana's community college system. There was a small Ivy Tech team that met with the CHE commissioner and CHE staff 
to intensely look and dialogue about the college as the CHE prepared this legislatively mandated report. Faculty Task Force 1 and 2, excuse me, just a second. Faculty Task Force 1 and 2. This team addressed faculty items including student and faculty engagement and the task force was instrumental in addressing and going forward with several significant items. And the faculty council, voice, the voice of the faculty for consideration in the college's decision making process. President Elstroman endorsed this initiative and it has been an honor to work with the team and implementation over this past year. Another project was working with the academic and workforce alignment team for the, uh, the systems academic and restructure, including workforce alignment. Reflecting on two and what was evident initially for one, my last three positions incorporated transition responsibilities from a regional chancellor in place for a number of years to the regional merger the implementation of the system division structure, and the transition of the provost responsibilities and position between presidents. One premise in each of these transitions was, to main, was not to maintain the status quo, however, in contrast, to advance the agenda. Thank you, President Elsman, for the opportunity to serve. The last item I would like to share began at the college about 21 years ago. We were preparing internal regional budget requests and I relayed to the chancellor that we needed to invest in online education. I couldn't present details other than it was an initiative that we needed to, be, to uh, start and somehow launch our, our role in online education. And I framed the re budget request as venture capital for distance education. Well, from that request, a position was funded, and the region and the college was fortunate to recruit a high school math teacher from Florida, Kara Monroe. We never look back. Dr. Kara Monroe, your provost-elect, with the faculty and the academic team, will lead the innovation and academic integrity toward facilitating student learning and increasing student success for their educational pathways. Dr. Monroe is so exemplary qualified for this leadership role. Sue, thank you for the opportunity to share, and Godspeed as the purpose and the work of the college goes forth. Thank you so much, Steve. I know I can't express all of my personal, but as well as all of the college's appreciation for all that you've done. Thank you. So, colleagues across the state, We'll see you at the next month's President's Update on Friday, July 20th at 2 p.m. May I wish you a joyful June with summer fun and maybe even a vacation in there. I'm going to leave you with a picture of two of my favorite little joys of my life who I will spend this weekend. That is my granddaughter Faith and grandson Rhett and my daughter Lauren. So like you and I, let's all have a great weekend. Thank you.